One of the hallmark traits of dinosaurs that make them such a legendary group of animals has to do with their size. And among the dinosaurs, the largest were the sauropods. These behemoths towered over their surroundings throughout the Mesozoic and lived for over 130 million years, becoming one of the most prolific groups of dinosaurs. But where did these animals come from? And why and how did they get so big? No, seriously, the last time I studied dinosaurs, I was in the fifth grade. So let's get ready to investigate the evolution of sauropods together. To find the origin of sauropods, we have to go back to the late Triassic period, shortly after the evolution of the first dinosaurs. It's generally agreed upon that the ancestors of the sauropods were part of a group of dinosaurs known as Saurischia, or the lizard hip dinosaurs. This group also consisted of theropod dinosaurs, including the birds, as well as some other early dinosaurs such as Herrerasaurus and Thawa, the latter of which I will show for the longest time was just a type of non-bred. There are other interpretations on the initial split of dinosauria, such as the Ornithoscelida hypothesis, where there were no traditional Saurischian groups at all, and instead theropods would have been more closely related to Ornithischia, the order containing everything from Stegosaurus to Ceratopsians to Ankylosaurus, with the two orders together forming Ornithoscelida. The sauropods, as a result, would be a distant sister lineage to this larger clade. I could go on further talking about the different interpretations on the origins of dinosaurs, and while dinosaur lore is something that definitely pumps me up, for now let's just assume that sauropod ancestors were part of Saurischia and move on. Now these ancestors were known as the sauropodomorphs, and first evolved during the early part of the late Triassic, known as the Carnian. Like most dinosaurs at the time they first evolved, the earliest sauropodomorphs weren't all that large, capping out at around 2.5 meters, or a little over 8 feet in length. In addition, these animals were also bipedal. Looking at some of the earliest sauropodomorphs, such as Saturnalia, Panphagia, Guabisaurus, and Borealestes, you'd be forgiven for believing that these animals were ancestors of the more carnivorous theropod dinosaurs known for walking on two legs. In fact, one famous sauropodomorph, Eoraptor, was thought for the longest time to be an early theropod, but now is classified by many as also being a basal sauropodomorph. Despite their similarities to other dinosaur groups, sauropodomorphs showed a couple of distinguishing traits that set them apart from the rest of Saurischia. This includes possessing a smaller head compared to its body, and necks that are much longer than those of other dinosaurs, two features that would only become magnified as this group further evolved throughout the Mesozoic. In addition, these dinosaurs had tall leaf-shaped teeth with multiple denticles or tooth-like projections. This type of dentition was well suited for consuming foliage, but the earliest sauropodomorphs such as Panphagia were omnivorous. On the subject of their teeth, these dinosaurs were also known for having what's known as a wraparound overbite, where their lower set of teeth fit completely within their upper set of teeth. As the Triassic progressed, the world began to see a rapid increase in wetness and humidity, leading to the growth of many species of plants. With this abundance of foliage, especially ones that are in high to reach places, the long necked sauropodomorphs dipping their feet more and more into herbivory began to see an abundance of food sources that they could take advantage of. Eventually, these dinosaurs began evolving to larger sizes, leading to what would eventually be known as the prosauropods. Prosauropods were the largest organisms in their respective environments, with some, such as Platyosaurus, growing up to be 10 meters or almost 33 feet long and weighing in at 4.4 tons or 8,800 pounds. It was with animals such as Platyosaurus that we can finally see the blueprint for what would become the iconic long-necked giants of the dinosaur world. Even still, these prosauropods retain some of their more basal Saurischian traits, such as general bipedalism even though their center of gravity shifted more towards the front. In addition, many prosauropods like the aforementioned Platyosaurus and Massapondylus showed front limbs that had grasping abilities like their ancestors, even with a more forward-oriented stance. Of course, there were some prosauropods, such as Riojosaurus, that showed signs of living a far more quadrupedal lifestyle. In addition to this, a later prosauropod known as Aphrasia was known to have made another anatomical advancement in the evolution of small cheeks. As the Triassic began to come to a close, leading into the Jurassic period, more advanced prosauropods began developing new characteristics such as an even more quadrupedal lifestyle, smaller heads, longer necks, and a much bigger general body size. These advantages allowed these dinosaurs to browse higher places for foliage and defend against predators with their massively growing size. When it comes to looking more like the sauropods we're more familiar with, dinosaurs such as Leonorosaurus of Argentina and Unanosaurus of China saw their center of gravity shift even further, and it was clear to see that these dinosaurs were leaving their ancestral mode of bipedalism behind. Then there are some genera, such as Melanosaurus from South Africa, that looked so similar to sauropods that the line between what could be considered a prosauropod or a near sauropod and an actual member of the order Sauropoda begins to get blurry. But soon enough, 
the first true sauropods saw their entrance into the fossil record. Alright, now I said we'd be covering the true sauropods, but as you know, that's also a subject for debate. One of the groups argued to be the most basal sauropods is the clay Lessimsoridae, which dates back 228 million years ago. Under here we can find genera such as Lessimsaurus and Antinotetris that look strikingly similar to the prosauropods we mentioned earlier, even sharing traits such as having forelimbs with digits that had twisting and grasping capabilities. On the other hand, dinosaurs like Antinotetris had clear traits of sauropods, such as not only having a quadrupedal lifestyle, but also having far longer forelimbs than its hind limbs, with all its bones becoming thicker in order to support a greater weight. While some researchers, like Apeldedi et al., put Lessimsoridae under sauropod in 2018, others like Oliver W. M. Rauhaud and colleagues in 2020 separate Lessimsoridae and put the dinosaur as part of that group as sister to the lines containing sauropods. Now we like to call people like that haters, since the idea of sauropods being around since the Triassic sounds awesome. Following dinosaurs such as Lessimsaurus came the Gravisauria, containing even more developed sauropod dinosaurs such as Volcanodon. Gravisaurs made some changes to sauropod physiology, such as losing the fleshy cheek and overbite present in previous members, as well as having their teeth changed from protrusion-filled leaf-shaped ones to teeth that lacked denticles and were spoon-shaped. In addition, their jaws now had the ability to open far wider than before. These changes helped the sauropods engage in new modes of feeding referred to as bulk browsing, where these dinosaurs would just bite off quantities of food and immediately swallow it without chewing or processing it in their mouths. This would allow them to more quickly consume larger and larger amounts of food, leading to their growth as a group. Interestingly enough, this mode of feeding is also prevalent among Reddit moderators. These new sauropods also lost the flexibility in their limbs seen in earlier members, with their limbs now looking much more like rigid columns. These new leg structures would help stabilize and hold up the ever-growing sauropods. Following the Gravisauria came a new clade of sauropods known as the Eusauropoda. These sauropods grew to be even bigger and had even longer necks with more proportionally smaller heads. Speaking of necks, it's been thought for a while that some sauropods would have held their necks horizontally. Recently, however, scientists have begun speculating that much like earlier depictions, sauropods would have generally held their head up vertically. This is due to the fact that all amniotes, that is all tetrapods evolving from amphibians such as reptiles, birds, and mammals, all share a neck structure that is both vertical and curved. As a kid, I personally hated this depiction of dinosaurs such as Diplodocus and Argentinosaurus and found it goofy looking, so on a purely selfish level, this is a huge W. In addition, they saw more air sac chambers in parts of their vertebrae such as in their neck. This would overall lighten up the weight of the animal to counterbalance their larger sizes. Some early eusauropods include Spinophorosaurus from Niger, Shunosaurus from China, and Barapasaurus from India, with these dinosaurs measuring in at 13 meters and weighing over 7 tons. Fun fact, the former two dinosaurs were thought to have had a spiked club, similar to the ones we see in Ankylosaurus. Following these first eusauropods came an incredible radiation of sauropod forms that evolved throughout the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Many of these dinosaurs might be familiar to you and are all classified under Neosauropoda. Neosauropods had a few new evolutionary features they brought to the table. This included teeth being concentrated near the front of their mouths, allowing them to easily crop more food when feeding, as well as a larger nasal region. Neosauropoda itself branched off into two additional clades sometime during the Middle Jurassic, the Diplodocoidea and the Macronaria. Beginning with the Diplodocoidea, these dinosaurs were known to have had pencil-shaped teeth and snouts that were squared off at the front. The first branch of this clade contains two sister lineages, Diplodocidae and Decreosauridae. These two lineages are grouped together as Flagellocotida, meaning tail whips. Of course, this references one of the key characteristics of these dinosaurs, that being their whip-like tails. Studies have shown that these tails could actually be able to whip fast enough to break the sound barrier, truly making them whips, and that they could be used in self-defense. There are some detractors to these claims. But I'm just going to ignore them, because as we all know, science should serve to make things look as cool as possible, as opposed to being accurate, and there are few things cooler than whipping an Allosaurus unconscious with your giant tail. There are a few more features that these sauropods possessed that were unique for sauropods, including forelimbs that were a lot shorter than their hind limbs. The Decreosauridae in particular were also known for having a comparatively shorter neck. As a result, these dinos would have fed on plants that grew far lower. This family is also known to have contained some of the most interesting looking sauropods such as Amargosaurus and Decreosaurus, both of whom had long spines running along their backs. The second family here, Diplodocidae, contains some of the most famous of all sauropods such as Diplodocus, and one of the most famous of all dinosaurs, Brontosaurus, who recently beat the allegations as being seen as the same species as the closely related Apatosaurus. These dinosaurs had even longer tails than the Decreosaurus, as well as longer necks as well. Moving on to the branch sister to Flagellocotida, Rebecca Soridae, 
These unusual dinosaurs were known to have had faces that faced straight down with flared out snouts with teeth lining the front. This can be seen in sauropods such as, and for future reference to everyone, this is how the dinosaur's name is pronounced, Nigerosaurus, which had 500 teeth. Let's now move on to Macronaria. Macronaria means big noses, and as such, one key feature of these sauropods was a greatly enlarged neris. A more basal Macronarian is the late Jurassic Camarasaurus, and yeah, these dinosaurs certainly look like they had big sniffers. But this dinosaur falls outside the other Macronarians, all grouped together under the Titanosaurus forms. These dinosaurs were known for having even bigger snouts, with nares on top of their skulls, and longer necks. Titanosaurus forms can be broken up into three clades. Now, the first of these clades is the Brachiosauridae. In addition to being extremely large, these dinosaurs also had highly elongated forelimbs. The best known Brachiosaurid is Brachiosaurus, who shared a similar environment to other sauropods such as Brontosaurus, Camarasaurus, and Diplodocus. This is my favorite dinosaur of all time. It's so cool. Other Brachiosaurids include the African Giraffe Titan and some Cretaceous genera such as Sidarosaurus. The next group up is the Euhalopodidae, containing more long-necked giants that lived during the Cretaceous, such as Erukidu. I don't really have much more to say about them, so I guess, yeah. The final clade here is Titanosauria. Titanosaur evolution and phylogeny is expansive and convoluted, to the point where titanosaurs themselves could warrant a separate video. But these sauropods were the largest of all dinosaurs and included behemoths such as the South American Argentinosaurus and Patagotitan. A little fun fact about the latter one, I went to the Natural History Museum with my dad a couple months ago, and uh, there's like this giant skeleton, this giant fossil of Patagotitan, and it like goes through like five different rooms. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, I was just walking and walking and walking, and you got this thing's neck stretching out all over into like the marine mammal section or something. Oh my, it's crazy, bro. It's actually crazy. Like, that is like an actual test pump right there. I was like, yo, this is so cool. Like, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna like bench, like, I don't know, even like 85 pounds. I was so pumped. <coughs> there are also titanosaurs that are known to have possessed armor, such as Saltosaurus and the other dinosaurs under its clay, Lithostrosha. Titanosaurs were not only the largest dinosaurs to have ever lived, but also some of the last. Alamosaurus of the late Cretaceous shared its environment with Tyrannosaurus rex, and the two would both face the great extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Sauropods represent the absolute limits of life on land. No animals before and no animals since have managed to match their gargantuan proportions. These dinosaurs have captured the hearts of people all over the world and stand alongside other dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops as emblems of prehistoric life. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a like, make sure to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time.